going on guys? Today we are out with a little bit of a different fish. We got a few hours this evening to come out and fish. I rarely keep fish today. We are catching fish. I'm not sure if we're gonna do fish tacos or a fish fry, but we're walleye fishing here in the Hayward area. It's kind of a gloomy, dreary, cold fall day, but um, we should be able to catch a few fish. So we're gonna get to side imaging, hopefully find some fish and uh, catch them. All right guys, this is exactly what I want to see. I will take a screenshot of the fish. You guys can see it. We're going to drop the trolling motor. You want to drop it, Surly? We fish here. One question I get all the time is, how fast do you move the boat when you're jig fishing? Well, that all depends. Most of the time I'm fishing a very small pocket of fish and uh, I want to be spot locked just so I can make the same couple casts kind of over and over at the same stuff. So we're gonna kind of wheel back around on these fish, spot lock and cast at them. All right guys, first cast just got picked up. And we got him on, this might not be a walleye. It is a nice walleye though. This might not take too horribly long. He's gonna be too big though. Okay, that one's early. First cast. All right guys, so there we go. First cast of the afternoon here. That's a nice fish. The legal limit is a uh, three fish bag, but I only need a couple of fish under 20. He might be about 19 inches long, we'll see. There we go, that is a perfect one to eat right there. 19 inch fish, I never keep anything over 20. Um, those are just kind of the quality fish here in Hayward. So under 20 inches, 15 to 20 are fair game. And uh, he is gonna be a tasty walleye. All right, we just got picked up. Fish on. Surly, look at that. That is dinner fish. Look at that, buddy. He's a perfect eater for you. Or for me, one of the two. Perfect about 16 inch eater. It's our second keeper of the afternoon here. All right guys, there is our second keeper of the evening. I'm gonna throw him in the box with the other one and uh, make a few more casts. I don't know how many fish we're gonna catch or how long we're gonna stay out here. Surly does not last very long in the cold. He's not a cold weather dog. So we'll make a few more casts and uh, see what happens. So one little tip I use quite a bit is that, uh, you know, if I'm sitting here fishing and I see that side of me, you know, I see that pot of fish, I pull up on it, I'm just not getting bit. Or let's say I catch a couple fish and all of a sudden I'm just not getting any more bites. You know, most of the time I like to spot lock so that my boat is just upwind of that spot. So really side to side, I'm not gonna see a whole lot of the fish unless those fish move out farther. So one thing I kind of like to do is I'll just take the boat off spot lock. So where I would think the fish are is right behind me. So I'm gonna take, side imaging always reads perpendicular to the back. So all I'm gonna do is take and swing my boat sideways like this. And what I'm looking for is fish starting to appear in here or just to kind of see where they are. And I'm already seeing a few fish right on this edge. One of them is right where I was casting. So, you know, that's not okay. So right now we have a perfect shot. The back of the boat is pointed straight this way. And uh, I was casting right here. Now I'm seeing a pot of fish that's right off my left. And I'll kind of go ahead and capture that shot for you guys. So there's a tiny little pot over there. Um, that I was not casting at. I mean, it's five, six fish, which is a decent amount of fish, I guess. They're all in a real tight spot. So basically what you can do a lot of times is kind of line that spot up so it's perfectly, you're perfectly parallel to it. And I'll go backwards. So right now I can see them again, so I hit spot lock. Now I know those fish are right in line with the back of my boat. The wind's coming from this way, so when I hit spot lock like I just did, my boat's gonna swing and those fish are gonna be straight backwards. Um, so just a little tip I use a lot. You know, a lot of times the guys will use side imaging to find that pot initially, but they don't use it to follow fish around. I'm really excited for Mega Imaging 360 to, um, to get that on this boat and uh, play with that, because it's kind of the same thing. You won't have to shuffle as much like this and that'll be kind of cool. But for the meantime, or if you're just running side imaging, you know, a lot of times if you're just not getting bit, you know, the walleyes are constantly on the move. So if you just do a little boat swing, 
and kind of move around that spot. A lot of times you can kind of re, you know, refine that pod or verify that there's fish there that just didn't bite. And we got another nice walleye. This one's way too big to be kept, but that's fine. We already got our dinner fish. Look at that one, Surly. That's a nice one, isn't it? That's a nice walleye. Go ahead and scoop them up here. There we go. fat chunker. The build on some of these clear water fish up here is awesome in this area. One of the cool things about the Hayward area is that there's a ton of different bodies of watered fish, whether that's shallow river type stuff, um, these deeper, larger, deep clear basin, Cisco type lakes. There's a wide variety of different kind of lakes you can fish. As far as walleyes go, these deep clear lakes are far and away better than anything else. I mean, this is not like a huge fish or anything like that, but a lot of days you can average them about like that, about 22, 23 inches. Awesome, awesome walleye. What do you think, huh? All right, so one question I always get whenever I do any kind of minnow video is how do you hook the minnows? Well, that's pretty easy. Um, you know, whenever I'm fishing weeds like this, actually really whenever I'm fishing any kind of minnow, I pretty much hook them the same. Um, a lot of guys want to do this right here. Will the minnow stay alive? Yes. Will it stay on your hook very long? No. So the main way I like to fish minnows most of the time is in through the mouth and up through the top of the skull like that. Does it kill the minnow? Yes, they stay on very good. I don't care if the minnow's alive or not, I impart all the action with the rod, so I don't need that minnow really kicking around or stuff like that. You know, sometimes if you're running like creek chubs and it's a real tight quarter situation, sometimes you might just hook them right through the lips and just kind of make a short pitch. But for this, most of the jig and minnow stuff I do, in through the mouth, up through the top of the head. All right, just got picked up again. A lot of times the colder the water gets real late in the season, you got to give them just an extra second. And that is exactly what we want to feel. This feels large, Surly. What do you think, buddy? You're going to get to go home. If we land this fish, another quality, quality northern Wisconsin walleye. There we go. There's a ton of fish in this lake. This exact size, kind of this 22, 23 inches long. Chunkers, awesome fish. He's got that jig right in the roof of the mouth. Very rarely, when you give them a lot of time with a bigger minnow like this and a bigger jig, um, do they really choke that bait down. So um, it's not like fishing a single hook where they sometimes can. There we go, awesome. Northern Wisconsin walleye. We're gonna let that one go and uh, get out of the rain, get out of the cold. What's going on guys? We are now back home and uh, we're gonna clean these fish up. So walleyes are actually super easy to clean. Um, there's really not much to it. You've probably seen this on a hundred other YouTube videos of basically you just kind of cut right down behind the fin. You can either cut through the ribs and then pick the ribs out or most of the time I just kind of go just like this. Right down to the tail. And all you do is just kind of follow the bones along on the underside like this. Super easy to do. And then all you're left with at the end is this. You can kind of trim that. And then there's one other line of bones that runs right here. You can always feel, or a lot of times you can hear it with the knife. So basically all you do is take the fillet off the skin, just like that. And then if you want it to be 100% boneless, all you do is kind of feel for this middle piece, 
and cut it right like that, right on both sides of it. So when you're actually done with the filet, it'll look something like that right there with the split in the middle. Awesome cold water, super clean filets. Uh, we'll do the other side of this one, and then the small one, and then uh, I'll take you guys inside. All right, well I got way ahead of you guys, but that's all right, we'll play it back from the start. So we filleted our walleye, next thing we did, it's actually the next day now, but I took the walleye filet and I diced it up into small pieces because we're gonna be doing fish tacos tonight. Now, I am by no means like an expert cook, so this is just kind of the simple way I do this. That tastes pretty decent, so take the walleye filet, you dice it up. Next thing I do, I squeeze lemons over the top of the fish and let it kind of like sit in the fridge like that for like half an hour, 45 minutes. Some reason when you put lemon on fish, it almost like purifies it, it like makes it um, a lot like firmer. These fish, these are walleyes from Northern Wisconsin in 42 degree water, so they're already pretty, you know, there's no fishy taste to them, but if you do have a fish that has fishy taste, whether it's a warm water pike or bass or something like that, squeeze some lemon on it and it works wonders. It also tastes really good once it's inside the fish. So after that, after I've diced it up, put the lemon on it, the next thing I do is I take my batter, I make my batter, which is, I always use whole wheat flour. Whole wheat flour seems to crisp up a lot better. You can buy like a pre-made batter or mixer, whatever you wanna do, but if I'm just gonna make like a fish fry, no tacos, I'll add some seasonings to this. But if I'm just doing fish tacos, basically all I do is take my bowl of uh, you know whole wheat flour and then I dump one thing of taco seasoning in it. Pretty simple. Next thing is you mix it all together and make sure that the fillets are all perfectly covered just like that right there. And if you don't make a mess and if your fingers aren't super messy, uh, you have failed at this part. So next thing we do, which is very important, we're gonna take you over the stove and show you what's up. All right, the cooking process. Well, I don't do anything crazy, just regular oil, vegetable oil, whatever you wanna do there. But the important part is, is that you get it very hot. This is not supposed to be a long cooking process. You want it where you put the fish in and you can hear it and see it getting fried, right? You don't wanna put the fish in there before it's basically sizzling like this. So we're gonna get all our fillets in here and uh, give it a little bit of time, maybe flip them over a little bit. And I dip just enough oil in there to kind of barely cover the fish. And uh, once it's done, we will meet back up with you guys. All right, so it has only been a couple of minutes now, but it is done. And basically what you wanna see is it coming out very, our camera just has horrible lighting right now, but basically what you wanna see is it coming out very crispy and golden brown like that. That is exactly what we want. And one of my favorite parts about fish tacos is that you don't have to keep a lot of fish to feed a lot of people. Like I said, this is only two walleyes that we kept yesterday. And this is gonna be more than enough fish tacos than uh, a couple of people can eat. I can't see. Ready? Nice. All right, make a taco. Hold the multigrain. You're going, this is, you're taking too long. Are you showing off the multigrain scoops? Hope so. All right, my main Mitchell is going for the extreme wellness tortilla. That's right. Um, what is it, just no carbs? No, what do you mean no carbs? It's a damn tortilla. Of well, course there's carbs what, in Why it. is it extreme wellness? It's whole, oh, whole wheat, okay. So he's going, a little bit of uh, sour cream on the shell. Yep. Nothing crazy. There's a method for this. I've seen this man make many tacos. Many fish tacos. <laughs> many tacos in his life. Just love, love me some fish tacos. You got like a, you got anything to grab those? Screw it. I just grab them. I think I always put a little more fish on my uh, tacos than Tom does. He does go heavy on the fish. I'm a big boy. Growing. I'm a growing boy. And a little cheese. You can get as fancy as you want. You can do like uh, any kind of. Uh, this would probably be good with like some and some, some what? Some like raw onion and all the fixings. That's but, getting fancy. Well, it would be. We can do it pretty pretty simple though. I do, yeah. Little cheese, oh, little oh, cream, little almost, fish. Almost forgot. Little Did you already like squeeze these or what? Only some. Yeah. On what? on the fish before you put it in, dude. Oh. That's what makes it. Really oh, good. that's the secret. And a little bit of lemon on there. A little bit of Taco Bell. A little Taco Bell sauce. 
And there you have it. I mean, that is really all you have to do. It's better than you're going to get in any restaurant. For a delicious fish taco. Take a bite. We need the sampling bite on, on video. Yes, ma'am. It's all about the fold. It is. And these things are ice cold, so it's not a good, not a good fold. How is it? Well, let me eat it first. How's the first taste? Good. Good. Nice. Well, thanks for watching, guys. We're quickly gonna wrap up our uh, taco. I gotta eat some tacos too, and I gotta do a podcast here in a second. But thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, the fish catches, the fish cooking. Um, if you guys are not yet, please subscribe. Like I said, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.